Hello and welcome. I am Michael Sheehan, joined by Ian Dilley over there, riding our bikes out in the world after watching the very first ever UCI Esports World Championships. It of course happened on Zwift. We're gonna give you the rundown and then we are going to go see our good friend, Lawson Craddock, who didn't have the best day out there. The men's race started out as many virtual races do. The group uh, kind of whittled down, but no real escapees were able to pry their way clear, although Team Canada did clearly go in with a lot of organization and a plan. Team Canada was seen team time trialing themselves off the front in the final 10 kilometers of the race, but that was to no avail. It really came down to the final 3K, and hostilities were spurred off by my old teammate, Jordan Shane, riding for Team Canada. Jordan employed a power-up going into the final climb, but it was not to be because there were two Germans hot on his case. One of them, the eventual winner, Jason Osborne. Who is Jason Osborne, you might ask? We wouldn't blame you because it turns out he's not really a competitive cyclist, at least until today. He is now the world champion of esports in cycling, coming from a very, very impressive rowing background, clearly using his uh, cardiovascular system to great effect. He is a world champion and a European champion and a uh, Olympian in rowing, using his skill sets now in the world of virtual racing. And he just showed the entire World Tour Peloton that they're maybe not that great at e-racing. Now, as for Jason Osborne, he seemed a little underwhelmed, I have to say, in the post-race interview. Um, maybe even disappointed that he just jumped in and suddenly became the best. He gets to wear the rainbow jersey on Zwift for uh, the entire year and showed the entire world what he was capable of today in the very first esports world championships. The women's race played out very similar to the men's race. Uh, the peloton was significantly reduced in size. I believe there was only 28 riders that came into the bottom of the final climb. Now the American team was looking extremely good. They had eight riders left in the 28 rider group and they were the main team to employ team tactics. It was Christy Tracy uh, using her featherweight power up extremely effectively right at the base of the climb and getting a significant gap that looked for a second like she might be able to hold on to it. Um, gotta give Christy some love. She is from here in Austin, Texas, where we are filming right now. And, but when the favorites kicked it off, they came blazing by uh, Christy. Ashley Molman Paseo showed why she was one of the favorites for the race and looked like she was gonna be walking away with a win, but Sarah Gigante gave her a real run for her money. And it was a really, really close finish. Uh, Paseo ended up winning by just half a bike length and she gave a very uh, fun post-race interview, even had her own uh, poster with fans in the background cheering her on in South Africa, as well as a bottle of champagne, which she popped in her own living room and sprayed all over the house. It was, it was super cool. Overall thoughts on this first inaugural eSports World Championships? I mean, eSports racing certainly isn't as dynamic as IRL racing. We were expecting a bunch finish as we oftentimes see in these races and that's what we got. Um, I will say the short punchy finish made it uh, pretty interesting in the finale. Um, it would be cool to see some more dynamic courses, um, bigger climbs. Initially, the racers were slated to finish on the Volcano KOM, which might have changed the dynamics, but it's just so hard to get off the front and form breakaways in these Zwift races that um, it seems like that's something that they're gonna have to figure out if this is going to be a, 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 a viable form of uh, racing moving forward. Another cool thing about esports racing is North Americans are pretty good at it. Uh, we were talking about the same riders that we talk about during the normal world championships. The American women and the Canadian men and both teams came in with strong plans and executed and both were left uh, just off of the podium. Unfortunately, 
but very close. America and Lauren Stevens finished fourth place. You know, big shout out uh, definitely to Lauren Stevens. Uh, I spoke with her at the uh, just before the start of the race, and she actually tipped Ashley Moolman as her biggest competition. You know, Lauren, she got uh, just caught out on the climb, wasn't quite in position, and things like that do matter. Positioning, even in the uh, world of virtual Zwift racing, but you know, in a sense, 2020 had robbed us of a lot of bike racing. It ended up being. Uh, a pretty incredible season against all odds though. We saw a lot and we saw new things. We we have witnessed the evolution of eSport racing and bringing it to the World Tour Peloton in a way that probably uh, would never have happened had the coronavirus pandemic not shut everything down at the very start of the season. So I think that it's a big positive to end the year on. We would love to hear your thoughts on the eSports World Championships. You know, uh, if you haven't, watched it go give it a watch on flow bikes and let us know what you think i personally think that this is uh, a discipline that is going to be sticking around for quite a while and we're going to continue to see an evolution of it do you love it do you hate it let us know ian i have uh gotta say i've noticed this new bag that is on your bicycle let me just let me just show the viewers over here flip this camera around Tell me, what, what is this and what is inside? Michael, this is a one and only Fabs chest. This particular version was patinaed by Ultra Romance himself, um, AKA Ronnie Romance, Ron Spikes. It is the ultimate do it all, um, go bike packing in the wilderness or make internet TV shows about bike racing bag. Inside I have my mask. I have some gym shorts because sometimes you need gym shorts and uh, got my track jacket. The, the Sp app. Space for plenty more though. <laughs> Lawson, we've tracked you down at your home to get the full scoop on the eSports World Championships from which you were ejected with five kilometers to go. Congratulations are in order. The first person to ever be disqualified from an eSports World Championships. So you didn't have a heart rate strap properly paired up, uh, no fault of your own, so you say. What message came up? Was it, was it somebody, a race commissaire who was actually messaging you, telling you that you had been ejected, and tell me how you're feeling in the race. Look, I am a clean rider. I do all the right things. I work hard to show up at these races. I hope my tar my reputation isn't tarnished after today. No, it was uh, it was just a, a mistake on, on my end, and yeah, I had my heart rate belt on as compared to my Garmin, but all of a sudden, with, with 5K to go, I, a notification popped up on on the platform on the TV saying, hey, look, you violated the, the terms of the, the game and you'll be, you'll be excluded from the race and really there's nothing I could do. Looking back, I, I wish there was a way for me to communicate with them directly. Um, I know they had tried to reach out to the Federation, but at that point it, uh, enough time had kind of already passed and it was too much to try and get a hold of me uh, indirectly so in the end it was a really disappointing way for me to, to end the day I, I felt great i loved being out there racing i think Zwift racing is uh incredible to be honest and uh you know this isn't going to deter me from from showing back up the next one and, and hopefully many more after that and, and giving another go so i think we all learned a, a lot of uh a lot of things off the uh from today you know i think usa cycling did a pretty good job of, of organizing us and, and getting us on the same page and obviously races uh, kind of tend to play out a lot different than you expect and it's tough because you know with, with no bearing to be able to look at for, for information for today it's tough to kind of think about and, and, and plan for what exactly would happen. I've done quite a bit of Zwift racing in the past. This is definitely similar but also a different vibe uh, from, from what we got you know. We raced the Tour de France stages uh, back in July or so, and, and, and there we had kind of World Tour pros that were, you know, top level fitness, and um, you know those are extremely difficult. So I felt like it was a pretty even playing field all across the board, which made it even more competitive. I mean, we had around 30, 40 guys 
uh, vying for the win, coming up the, the final uh, final climb. And that's not something we really ever ever saw in any other Zwift race. Uh, there was a lot on the line today, you know, the first uh, winner of the World Championships, you know, World Championship jersey. So I, I think it was really interesting, really, really cool to be a part of. And I think this is only going to be the start. We're going to see a lot of improvements. Uh, I think we're all going to go back and look at today. And as USA Cycling, we're going to go back and, and look and maybe yeah, see where we went wrong, where we, you know, didn't walk away with the jersey and, and try and improve on that for the future. But I'm excited to see where where this heads in, um, in the future and, and, and to see exactly uh, what it turns into because, you know, in my opinion, uh, this jersey is worth, you know, just as much, is eventually going to be worth just as much as, uh, uh, you know, winning the, the, road, the road world championship. So, uh, going to be exciting to, to see and I'm very proud to be part of the, the, the first one. What? Why doesn't this one have the pineapple? Uh, they, dude, they take like two years to grow. And then for whatever one, this one. Wait, this actually grew a pineapple? Yeah. Are you going to eat this? Yeah, yeah, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Screw eSports World Championships, yeah. dude. We just want to talk about lots and pineapple. We're living off the land here. <laughs>